Hello children, welcome to this time of Bible lesson that we can have on this Lord's Day. And before we begin, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this time that we can come before thee. Thank you that we can come to learn from thy holy and precious word. We pray that thou be with the children who are listening, even to this recording, that you will prepare their hearts to listen to your word, to obey your word in their lives. Pray that you go before us, asking thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Now children, the title of our lesson that we'll be learning from today is Jesus' birth is announced. Jesus' birth is announced. Alright, our text for today is taken from Luke 1 verses 24 to 38. Verse 24. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 33 And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she have also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. The Lord bless the reading of his precious and his holy word. Now in this lesson, children, we will learn of the birth of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ first came to earth, right, his first coming, he did not come without people knowing. All right, he had someone to announce that he is coming. People knew that he was coming. All right. And one example we can see is in Luke 2, 11. All right. In the little town of Bethlehem, the angel of the Lord came unto the shepherds and said, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And people not only knew that Jesus Christ was coming, God made sure that this was preached to the people, that the people will know that his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, will come to earth to save the people, sinners, from their sins. But this coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is also for everyone. Jesus says that he has come to be the saviour of the world, to die for everyone, to die for all. And that is all of us, because we are all sinners. And Jesus also says that whoever believes in him, he will be saved from the eternal, the forever and ever punishment in hell. In this account, what had happened before is the angel Gabriel, right, told Zacharias, Zacharias is the husband of Elizabeth, told Zacharias that Elizabeth, his wife, would have a son and he will be named John. Now, Zacharias and Elizabeth, right, to them, this would be a very big thing. Why? Because number one, they had no children and they were already very old. All right. Can you imagine, for example, a 70-year-old or 80-year-old person having a baby, 
you know, a, a, you know, a, a baby in the womb, in the stomach. It's impossible, right? To us, it seems so, so hard to believe. It will never happen. We will probably just laugh at it. But with God, nothing is impossible. With God, God can make it to happen. And God had a special purpose for their son, for the son of Zacharias and Elizabeth. And what, it, what is it? It's that he will be used of God. He will serve God in the future when he grows up. And God also sent angel Gabriel to tell Mary, Mary's Elizabeth's cousin, all right, that she and Joseph will also have a baby. All right, but the angel appeared to both Mary and Joseph at different times. The angel told Mary first and then told Joseph. All right, and this time we know that Mary was going to marry Joseph, but they are not married yet. So the angel Gabriel came and told Mary that Mary, you are going to have a baby in your womb. And this baby is a special baby. It's not just any ordinary baby like you and me, but he is the son of God. And that is Jesus. And this can only be done by God's power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And over here, we know, okay, that she was going to marry Joseph, but she has not married Joseph yet. She's not married yet. Then how can she have a baby? Because this is the work of God, right? Anyone will be surprised. And even Mary, she's probably surprised. So Gabriel told Mary, don't be surprised. And that this baby is a special baby. And in Luke 1 verses 31 to 33, the angel told Mary that this baby shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So this is what the angel Gabriel, angel Gabriel told Mary. And at this time also, by the time when this happened, Elizabeth, which is Mary's cousin, already had her baby in her stomach for how many months? The Bible says six months. All right. And Mary also did not tell Joseph that she was having a baby. And Joseph soon knew that Mary was having a baby. But the problem is what? The problem to him, he might be thinking, oh, we're not married. How can she have a baby? The baby is not mine. And he probably thought that, oh, Mary had done something wrong. Mary, Mary probably had sinned. And during those times when you sin this sin, you're know, not married yet and you have a baby, right? You'll be punished. You'll be put to death. Okay? So what did Joseph do? He had to break the relationship. Okay? He, well, that's what he did. He broke the relationship and he put her away secretly. Then we'll see what happened. In a dream, God spoke to Joseph. God told Joseph, Joseph, take Mary to be your wife. Don't put her away. Take Mary to be your wife. Why? She's not done anything wrong. And the baby in her womb was not an ordinary baby. It's a special baby. And that Mary is going to give birth to a son and his name will be Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. It's very hard to believe, right? Right? Not married and yet can have a baby. All right? And this baby is God. What did Joseph do? Did he argue? Did he say, no, I don't believe? Joseph obeyed. And Joseph obeyed and he did what the angel told him to do. All right? So what happened after this? So, so when Mary heard this news, Mary, angel Gabriel told Mary, okay, that, your cousin is also going to have a baby. What did she do? She's also, of course, very happy, right? She probably also knew she, that her cousin, right, has not, uh, is already very old. You know, she and her husband and, you know, they have not had children. So she immediately went to see Elizabeth, to also tell Elizabeth what God had done for her. How God is so good to her, what God had done for her. And when Mary went to see Elizabeth, and Elizabeth greeted her. What happened? Elizabeth's baby, okay, Elizabeth already had the baby for six months. The baby inside her womb, the baby inside her stomach. What did the baby do? He jumped for joy, all right? And Elizabeth said in a loud voice, 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And that's taken from Luke chapter 1, verse 42. Alright, she's telling Mary that you are indeed blessed, right? God has shown favor to you. God has chosen you to be the one, alright, to bear his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did Mary do? She also praised God. She did not think that, oh, I'm such an important person, you know, that's why God chose me. No. She said in Luke 1, verses 46 and 47, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit have rejoiced in God my Savior. Over here, it tells us that Mary know that it is God who is good. It is God who is always good. Right? God, in his own plan, has chosen her to be the one that will bear forth his son. Alright? And she knew, even then, that she's a sinner. She's a sinner and she saw that God is her saviour. So for Mary to have this child Jesus in her, is something that which only God can make to happen. Alright? We remember this verse that says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And children, with that, may we remember that our God is an all-powerful God. He's a mighty God. And we must see with that, that we must see and we must know with that how sinful we are, how small we are, and that we are sinners, we are weak, and we must go to God. And for those who have still not come to believe in Him, you must come and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Gabriel, all right, he appeared to Joseph, right, in a dream, right? He already knew, okay, that Mary was going to have a child. So Gabriel also told, uh, Gabriel told Joseph, okay, not to put her away, not to be afraid, okay, but to, mar but to marry her, okay, when it's time, all right? So in the next lesson, you will also see, Okay, you will learn of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we close, let's come to remember these two points. The first point, what have we learned? As we remember, today was a short lesson. As we remember, okay, of how the Lord Jesus Christ came down to earth. Alright, how God had this plan to save us. Alright, Jesus Christ had to come down to suffer for us come down in flesh to suffer and to die for us because he loves us he does not want us to end up in hell to forever be punished in hell may we also draw close to god may we keep ourselves very close to god and number two remember that god is always faithful what god says it will happen when god says that he will send his son to die for us has it happened it's already happened you see what God says is true, it will always come to pass. And God is true to His word. So we must come to believe and to hope in Him. We thank God for this time that we can come to learn from His holy and His precious word. And in the next lesson, we will learn on the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us commit this time to the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this time, even that we are able to learn from thy word. We thank you, Father, for what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. We thank you for how you love us, that you gave your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come to this earth to suffer and to die for us. Father, we pray that thou will help us to walk closely with thee, to always remember what the Lord Jesus has done for us. And Father, we pray that thou will help us, Lord, even to draw us near to thee. I want to pray for those who have not come to know you yet. We pray, Father, that thou be gracious to also save them to yourself. May you help them, Lord, to believe in thee even today. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.